Okay, hello everyone. I'm going to continue with a presentation in the same direction uh, as the one presented last year in this same conference um, about La Draga, focusing on this one, on surface correlation in the sequence of occupational uh, floors at the very same settlement. Uh, La Draga is a Neolithic lacustrine settlement uh, located at the shore of Lake Bagnoles at the northeastern part of the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, Bagnoles Lake is the second more extensive natural lake of glacial origin at the Iberian Peninsula. It's a lake of tectonic and karstic origin formed from the unions of various dolines, as you can see here in the image. Um, the waters that alimenant um, the underground come from Alta Garota at 20 kilometers distance from the north. At the bottom of the lake, we have 13 subterranean sources um, that, aliment, um, that aliment the lake, providing 400 to 600 liters of water per second. Six superficial fluvi fluvial sources um, were detected also at the western part of the lake, while canals are helping channeling out the exceeding water from the lake to a neighboring river. Um, uh, the three excavated sectors at La Draga represent only a small proportion of the total extension of the settlement, which is calculated around 10,000 square meters, uh, with uh, 1,500 1, of them being actually underwater. Um, the three excavated sectors occupy only uh, 1,000 square meters out of the total extension, and they were excavated since 1991 until nowadays. Uh, um, those include Sector A, um, actually merged found in dry conditions. Sector B consist consisted by sectors B and D situated in the water table. And last but not least, Sector C, uh, completely underwater. Uh, the three sectors represent distinct uh, sedimentary environments uh, with the subsequent characteristic inclination of the depositional units towards the lake and the conservation conditions of the archaeological material. You can see here sector C where we have everything uh, conserved instead of sector A, for example, uh, that is found in dry conditions. Um, the first archaeological level in sector A uh, is preserved only at the level of post holes uh, with associated wooden timber logs vertically positioned into the lake mark directly. Sector BD, found in phreatic <coughs> conditions, has preserved all the uh, uh, wooden timber logs and the majority of organic material, while Sector C is found, is found completely underwater and as a result has preserved every kind of, of organic material. Um, the chronological time interval for the construction and occupation of the wooden platform so it seems to be around five 1320 uh, to 4980 BC, while the second archaeological level in Sector A um, has preserved travertine structures over the lake mark. At Sector B, a travertine kind of pavement with associated structures in it, uh, while at Sector C, travertine blocks intentionally transported over the wooden timber logs are uh, detected. Absolute chronological data locate this layer around uh, 5,200 to 4,800 approximately, indicating this way no chronological interruption between the two archaeological levels. Uh, in order to properly define the occupational flow, we should first define the smallest unit of physical space differentiated by adjacent units based on uh, its special properties. That would be a depositional event. Uh, so one or more depositional events can lead to an occupational floor, which thus um, is temporarily defined as the formation at a specific moment in time, and spatially defined as the lower contact of deposition on which action took place. Uh, an occupational floor uh, thus can be the a result of one or more activities in their final material products called uh, uh, occupational debris. Uh, so the objectives of this research um, are related in a chain way, first to distinguish between the different depositional events, then to observe the effects of anthropogenic and geogenic processes uh, on the occupational surfaces, and, la and to ultimately uh, reconstruct the dynamics of formation and deformation process of the Locustine settlement of Nodraga. Uh, for this purpose, and once defined the occupational flaws, we had to detect them on field. 
Uh, that was done at first microscopically during excavation. Um, we started graphic observations and schematic representations in the form of plants and sections. And on the other side, sedimentary samples from microstratigraphical analysis were retrieved from various points of the settlement uh, in order to clarify stratigraphic contexts and special geomorphological characteristics of the occupational floors. Uh, the micromorphological analysis uh, was important in order to identify the nature of human activities taking place at the settlement, as well as information of use and reuse of space, but also the detection of periods of stasis or erosion, the so-called stratigraphic gaps not so easily detected in the naked eye. Uh, the results of micromorphological analysis also helped differentiate between anthropogenic and geogenic formation processes, and so alongside with the macroscopical observations in the field, contributing to a depositional analysis um, of the site stratigraphy. Um, this analysis will permit a higher, uh, higher fidelity, a special correlation of the occupational floors. Um, for this scope, a database was constructed, uh, including the special information for each stratigraphic unit recorded in the field. Um, stratigraphic information retrieved from profiles and scan and plans, and on a later stage, the input of geomorphological characteristics. This information uh, was represented in the form of sector, location, section, and stratigraphy seats in Excel in order to uh, introduce the numerical data of these variables. Uh, this information um, uh, was then transformed into stratigraphical columns which represented this data. And um, from this point, we had to do all the connections in order to correlate the stratigraphy. Um, one of the special variables is the depositional sequence of Larago with data retrieved from microscopic observations. Here we have a general, a general example of, the, of that, uh, uh, where you can see, starting from the bottom and going upwards, um, we see the geological substrate of Lake Marl, that is the surface where the construction of wooden platforms is taking place. So the surface of Lake Marl is an occupational floor at the same time as well. Next, uh, we can see the remains of use and final abandonment of this first occupational floor of wooden platforms. And after a, an abrupt transition, uh, you can see um, a second occupational floor of different construction this time, including a traversing kind of pavement at sector BD and associated stru structures at sector A. The use, reuse, and possible appearance of other occupational floors is then visible. Here, while at the top, we have um, a natural pit formation um, coinciding with the abandonment of the settlement. Uh, so here, the geomorphological characteristics uh, were then retrieved from all the three excavated sectors at La Draga, and here we have a symbolic representation of their position over the lake marl surface. Here you can see sector A at a more dry position, sector BD here, and sector C underwater. This would be the lake uh, boundary. The interpolation method selected here um, to represent the depositional planes is prigging for its advantages to measure distances between all possible pairs of sample points and to subsequently use that information um, to, um, to model the spatial autocorrelation for the particular surface we're interpolating. It's most appropriate in our case, as we have, um, as we know, there is a specially correlated distance in our data. The stratigraphic boreholes are then mapped, and their interpolation via rigging begins. And uh, in this case, we have an example of interpolate of an interpolated cross section in sector A. The generated sequence uh, represents uh, the depositional dynamics of sector A in possible stratigraphic contexts. First of all, we have the Lake Marl again, uh, where the wooden post holes uh, were inserted. Sorry, this one. Um, then on the top of that surface, the extension of travertine structures, this purple color. And then two layers uh, correlated specially. And those uh, would coincide uh, with the reuse and abandonment of the travertine structures. 
Last but not least, the layer of pit formation, the post-occupational phase of the settlement, and the superficial layer, um, which is archaeologically relevant. It's a result of modern agricultural and construction works from the 92 Olympics at uh, Lake Bagnolas. Uh, at, at, at a later stage of the process, we have proceeded to a stratigraphic correlation of occupational floors between sectors A and D, because they had a significant distance between them and we had different sedimentary environments. Um, once again, uh, you have the Lake Marl here uh, on the bottom of everything. And then on the top of that, you have the layer of uh, use and abandonment of the wooden platform. So that would be this layer, the NA7. Um, that would not be preserved at sector A due to uh, dry conditions. And as a result here, you see the, the correlation stops. Um, later on, note to the special autocorrelation of the second occupational floor, that would be the travertine pavement, once indicated with travertine, this one. And the structure E261, that would be the travertine structure of sector A. Uh, these parts of travertine pavement and sector D and travertine structures sector A have been correlated this way. On the top of those, uh, we have um, the abandonment deposits of travertine structures, NA4 and then A2002. Uh, and and uh, last but not least, the post-occupational layers of pit formation and modern soil inputs uh, are the same as previously mentioned. Uh, beginning with the reconstruction of the occupational surfaces uh, throughout um, the whole excavated area, elevation creeds were created based on the calculated elevations of the top of each surface. Here you can see an example of the Lake Marl uh, elevation grid um, and its elevation map on the side. Um, here would be the lake boundary, and so you can see the clear difference of conditions of the three sectors. Sector A at a more elevated spot and dry conditions. Sector B, D at a slight depression, which I will explain later. And sector C, underwater. Um, once the elevation grids uh, for each surface are created, we proceeded to a sequence of those in order to detect possible stratigraphic contacts between, between them. As a result, uh, the reconstruction of the occupational surfaces of Ladraga includes, first of all, the Lake Merrill surface with the introduction of wooden posts into the geological substrate. Alongside the surface, you can also see an isopack map, that would be that, um, uh, which, which was created for its detectable stratigraphic unit. This includes the information of bottom and top uh, elevations of each unit and therefore we have the 3D representation of the surface. Um, this would be um, the Lake Marl substrate and also the first occupation level. Next, uh, we detect the occupational surface associated with the use and collapse of the wooden platforms, probably because of the ground subsidence created by the formation of a dough line, which is seen here and here as well in the isopack map. After the collapse of wooden platforms, the construction of travertine pavement in sector BD and travertine associated structures at sector A and uh, covering this second surface uh, we could have grayish clay sediments of terrigerous origin mixed with dispersed travertine fragments, which are seen over sector D here, and over sector A, sediments covering the travertine associated structures as well are being detected. We can then pass uh, to the post occupational deposits, including the pit formation and the sediments of terrigenous inputs from the inland. You can see that provenance of the, the of the terrigenous input from the characteristic inclination of the sediment. Uh, then we have a lacustrine input from possible 
uh, lake transgression expanding further through the prehistoric settlement. This time, <laughs> the direction is on the other side, uh, the direction of Lacusul Nimput from the lake. And uh, the exposure of a shoreline on later years after lake regression, as well as further transgression and lacustrine in input into the settlement. Until, of course, everything was covered by the artificial input of soils uh, for the 92 Olympics. So uh, here we have the complete sequence of um, the occupational and post-occupational phases at La Draga according to their geometrical representation of surfaces of contact and their subsequent correlation throughout all excavated sectors. Although it seems like there is the tri-dimensional tri representation of a surface, uh, we don't have the volume uh, between one surface and another uh, because this is affected depositionally by the surface that comes on top of it uh, as well um, as from the uh, surface of which it lies on. It may include more than one depositional events and represents the interval of time accumulation of the sediments. Although not always uh, thickness represents a greater depth, uh, in order to explain the volume, we have uh, proceeded into the introduction of additional data that would be absolute dating information, which we have from uh, archaeological material dated at La Draga, special distribution of archaeological material which we would like to integrate into our final model, and uh, more geomorphological attributes uh, retrieved through micromorphological analysis. On the, um, on, the last, uh, on the last presentation of this session, we have worked on uh, this absolute dating information exactly in order to, um, to have the opportunity to integrate it um, into our stereographic model. But that will be presented at the end by my colleague uh, Juan Barceló. And uh, that will be it. Uh, thank you very much. Some acknowledgement uh, for the Ladrara group. Um, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't uh, have received all the information and uh, nece necessary data for our research, as well as uh, the PhD scholarship that I'm having uh, at least for the next year, and um, all the projects that have helped uh, me to uh, develop my research. So thank you very much. <laughs>